Let's chill out a bit. Let's chill. I guess you already figured out what awaits us ahead. This car definitely deserves such dope shots. This is why we're gonna hit you with some more of those. M3 G80. Every car lover knows that this car is already in Georgia, because I came across tons of pictures online on every platform. As soon as it arrived, as soon as it touched Georgian ground with its fine tires, everyone right away wrote to us, if when are we going to film this car? When are we going to test drive it? They even wrote to the owner, who we were waiting for to modify this car a little bit, to tune it. Don't you think that this car was crashed and needed a fix or something like that? No, it is just modified in certain ways that we are going to talk about further. We are not only going to talk about these modifications, but we are also going to show you them in today's video. This color is one of the bright sides of this car. It's same color as my Cicolia brand watch. Those who have watchful eyes might have noticed that I wear different colored Cicolia watches, so today I decided to match the color with the car. I'm a big fan of those for quite a long time. I have been getting messages about watches a lot, so I added a link into the description. You can choose from a whole variety of shapes and colors yourself. Let me go back to the color. It is called Java Green. If you really want to know the name of color, you can check it out. It is absolutely beautiful. Under sunlight, or in the shadow, at night, in any period of the day, this color always stands out. First thing we do after buying this car is, we need to buy an electric screwdriver. <laughs> We will need this to uninstall the car plate. It has the same issue as my Supra. The biggest part of what makes this car so beautiful and what pretty much creates a lot of buzz is the front side. So one sunny day, as soon as you ship this car, you realize that you have to install your plate number. In case of Supra, it totally Fs up the appearance. Same thing with this car. So we were discussing the front of the car for quite a long period of time, talking about how big this car's nostrils really are. But in reality, we have to install the plate in the middle anyway, so it stops looking so huge. That's the reason why we pull over before filming it from the front and unscrew the plate with a screwdriver, so it is not getting in the way and we are able to witness the initial beauty of the design. This grill over here, as you can already tell, is not a factory grill. It is a CSL grill. It is obviously made of carbon fiber, and as far as I can tell it is doing a better job in cooling the engine. Otherwise no one would install it. They took a completely different turn and design. It doesn't look like any of the 3 series or any of 4 series. It has a completely independent design. Overall BMW decided to drastically change design in every new model. From my point of view, this is a dramatically different design. 
Also, let me remember my own words. BMW always offers us such design that we are having a hard time to get used to right from the start. But after some time passes, we slowly accept the design and lately fall in love with it. Anyways, let's go back to our car. To the front side in particular. It looks so much better in reality than in pictures. Much better, to be honest. When you see this car in the city, you won't be able to pass on it. You will have to take off your glasses and stare at it. BMW declares following official statement in order to communicate with the public. Quote, we decided to design this car in such a way because our numerous cooling radiators require a lot of airflow. And for this reason, the car needs a lot of hollow spaces, lots of holes for it to suck the air into, to cool the numerous amount of radiators inside. So what do we have here? If BMW is explaining themselves with this cooling necessity, all that airflow stuff, right here air is not going in anyways. I guess designers messed something up. Because if this was one whole piece like in every other BMW, and this was just a bumper, just pay attention to other BMWs, they have those little nostrils on the top, and the whole bumper becomes an air hole. So let me address people in BMW. Stop making these stupid excuses and don't be playing with us. Headlights. These laser headlights are absolutely beautiful. Especially inner shape looks really good. The only thing I don't like is overall view of the headlights from outside. I mean the outer line, which I don't like. I know some of you all BMW fans out there are going to do this and start some shit, but I just don't give a shit. I just don't like it. Period. Those who like it can do so. It is not bad, but it could be so much more aggressive. Because on the previous models, the front side is staring right into your soul. They didn't cut down on the carbon for show. It is literally everywhere. This is a competition edition, not a usual G80. It's competition. Some high-level shit, not your ordinary bullshit. These two skirts are supposedly made for airflow, but let me tell you what I think. For me, these are just stairs. No one can prove me that I am wrong talking about this decoration right here, which you can buy at a better car part shop for $10. I don't want to be a hater on this, but I think that this is extra. These stairs should not be on it. I think they don't go well with the design. Car is much more beautiful without them. Also, this attachment. I mean a not carved attachment with M symbol on it. So that we know that this is an M model. I don't like this attachment as well. I think it would look much better if it was carved in. Because I think that those attachments on top of the car take away from exclusiveness and beauty of design. I want to draw your attention on rims. These are factory setting rims, which I personally like. There are two different opinions on this. For example, Gio doesn't like them, but I do, because these carvings look very different and original. Yeah, but true hell for a car washer. I agree, exactly, hell for a car washer, because in order to clean them, you need to go really deep and meticulous with cloths to clean the gunk out. But I think these are very original and exclusive rims. Front rims are 19 inches, rear ones are 20 inches. And these quite brutally looking brakes. These drilled rotors do a great job at stopping the vehicle and we are definitely going to test them on the track today. Side spoiler is made of carbon and has some wings at the end. Those are really beautiful, even though I'm not a big fan of such wings. I prefer them to be just straight. Same design for the back. A little wing and some carbon design. I absolutely love the amount of carbon in this car. Not every model has it. I'm not a big fan of spoilers. I prefer ducktails. Little spoilers, but this is a really good one. It is following the shape of the car and doesn't stand out from the overall design. As for the rear lights, they do look aggressive at the first sight, but I'm always asking more from BMW, because these lights don't stand out for me at all. They don't look like M model lights. I somehow lack it. It looks like a Hyundai design. The lights part, I mean. I don't know how they are going to take the test of time, but I highly doubt that they will. I will repeat myself and say that they look like Hyundai design. Definitely not passing the test of time. I appreciate the fact that on M3 the quarter panels are wider. But I have a doubt that a usual G-series door can be installed instead of this one. Because door ends here and bloated quarter panel starts from here. 
I appreciate this, because lots of car manufacturers, when they make sport models, they almost never change quarter panel design sufficiently. For example, if you take a look at C63, it is just an ordinary C-class from behind. In this case, kudos to BMW. I don't want to talk more about a visual aspect of this vehicle, because you are going to see it from multiple angles, on every location. Track, drag, drift, city, outside the city. And we will try to get sick of this car. I'm really looking forward to do this, because this is a brand new car, manufactured in 2022. So let's get inside, do a couple of circles around, film some beautiful shots, and from there we are going to finally hit the track. Now I can talk about the interior of the car. There are lots of things which I like and are completely new. Things that stand out as soon as you look inside of the car. First of all, the seats. I always pay a lot of attention to car seats, because it's one of the most important details in a vehicle. Interior-wise, at least for me. The seats that we are looking at here are really praised by experts. BMW lovers and generally car lovers. These seats are fully functional, which means that they can do their job ideally. These are sport seats, and of course a driver is supposed to be a bit firm in them, especially on turns. They are supposed to contain you and you are not supposed to wiggle around. But it has one big downside. It has such a sporty design that it is super hard to get in and out of the car. A lot of discomfort. You just slam your ass right here. Right after you open the door, you slam into this thing. Every single time someone gets in and out of the car, they will have to rub against this thing. And it is going to wear off pretty quickly. Since it is brand new, I see no signs of collision here. But I guess in some time, tiny pieces of ass are going to be laying around here. Plus, if you're a bit overweight and you want to buy a new M3 with these seats, you're about to have a hard time. I hope this information is going to be useful for you. Now, everything else. If you get over these two downsides, the whole interior is just flawless. It's straight pornography. These seats are stunning. BMW really did a great job in answer to AMG seats just top level. If you suddenly appear in the salon, you know that you are in a BMW, right away. There are no major changes made to design and everything screams BMW. Of course the dashboard, main dashboard, is not a novelty for you. It looks absolutely great and almost every BMW has similar dashboard. I mean every new one. This place is quite spacious and wide, which is great because I always appreciate such beautiful displays in cars. Multimedia settings displayed. Right now we are looking at a setup. You see, it says comfort. Actually, comfort mode is really comfortable. I am using it right now and seats feel extremely comfy. It doesn't make my sides and my butt hurt, which is already a great thing. The steering wheel is also very mellow alongside with suspension system. Overall, this car has not given me any headache while driving, especially when driving in a city setting. For me, it is a great achievement because M is the type of model people buy to drive in a city as well as to have fun on the track. By now, this car is managing to do both. As for buttons, there are some changes here, which I appreciate because other BMWs have all black buttons. 
And here we have metallic color buttons, like the ones we have in AMG, which I absolutely love because I'm already pretty fed up with generic plastic buttons with reddish glow. But this panel right here is a signature BMW thing. Digits from 1 to 8 are on every model. I don't mean that it is bad, but obviously there are no changes here. Joystick is in a perfect place. BMW never messes it up and I always loved multimedia of BMW and especially this joystick right here which gives us control over upper monitor even though it is a touch screen. I still wouldn't bother touching it with my fingers when I can easily use the joystick right here. But still, if you want to show off, you can absolutely use the touch screen and switch stuff from here pretty easily. The M3 competition logo is at its place because everybody should know that it's a competition. Anyone who is in the car should know what's the deal. They should know that your car is top notch. Here we have Alcantara with M stripes. This inscription here says M performance, but this is not the type of sticker you can buy in a pawn shop. The only thing I want to say about Alcantara is that it is absolutely great and I love it but in many cases I absolutely hate it, and let me tell you why. Steering wheel. A brand new Alcantara steering wheel. This car has almost zero mileage, but you can already tell that it is going to get messed up real soon. It is nobody's fault, but Alcantara's. I just think that this car will do much better without Alcantara. Now the downside. For me it is a real downside. Screechy sounds the brakes make. I don't care if it is good or bad on the track. Everybody must be thinking that I'm driving M3 G80. And I need to change my brakes. And shouting at me to stop being cheap and fix the brakes. And I hate that. And it's not brake pads fault. It is just a factory setup. Also, we can control volume by simple hand movement. We can't play anything yet because of YouTube copyright rules and we can get a pretty bad strike. That's why we never play music in the car. Also, I want you to check out the 3D camera with a 3D view. Let me switch it to 3D. I'm not even touching it. Can you zoom in for a second? I think you can't do that here. Once you get used to it, you can have a look around your car in 3D. I'm sure you're all thinking there are maybe two M3 G80s in this country. And these guys are talking about 3D camera and stuff. I am sure 99% of y'all clicked on this video to see how good is this car on drag strip. How good is it drifting? This is why we are going to Rustavi International Motor Park now. Let's go.
We are getting ready for a drag race. First race will be done in a complete stock setting. We can change stages from here. It has 510 horsepower on a stock setting. And that's what we want to check. How good is a stock setting compared to M6? Hello everyone. To cut a long story short, let me get straight to the business. Let me tell you about characteristics. Those of you who don't know anything about our M6, and yes, such people do exist watching our channel, should know that this M6 has 650 horsepower. Right now we are going to compare which car is faster. After that, let's say this car M3 loses to our M6, then we are going to load a second stage map. It is done pretty easily. You just plug the thing in and choose stage 2, and your car is instantly boosted. I hope our Beast M6 won't disappoint us. Both of the cars are rear-wheel drive and of course we know that it makes no sense to start the race from a starting line, especially when it's so hot. That's why we are going to perform a rolling start. Let's go! One, two, three. It's damn fast. We just finished the stage one. There are two in general, but we are going to get to it later. Stage 1 is giving us 625 horsepower, and we just want to see the difference between stock 510 and 625 horsepower compared to M6. Ready? M6 has been defeated in every criteria and now it is the time for us to introduce a beast to the track. American beast. Now we have to compete against the hellish Mustang. That's what its plates say. Both of these bad boys belong to one owner, and let me repeat myself that we are flattered to have a possibility to film these amazing cars. It is on stage 1 settings right now, 625 horsepower. If Mustang wins this one, we are going to load a second stage, the last stage, and we will see what will happen next. The owner spoiled us with saying that M3 will surpass Mustang, but we are going to see it for ourselves. Let me officially state that if there exists such thing as a desk car, then it is Ford Mustang Shelby GT500 Cobra. It is a very dangerous car which has a wheel spin in every gear. I hope I won't die. I hope we're gonna clear some reputation and have a revenge on M6. Let's go. I'm right here, right here. It's some alcohol time. We're mixing 15 liters of alcohol with the fuel for a maximum power. So alcohol in the tank and some saint water in the trunk against the hellish Mustang. How much hellish horsepower is that? Oh, a hellstorm of horses. 
We just upgraded this car to stage 2. I mean the owner activated it. Now we have 750 horsepowers and 1000 Newton meters of torque. Well, that, that is really something. That's why the stress is in the air already. The temperature is rising. I'm starting to get anxious. The only thing I don't like is the weather. It is way too hot. I'm not using AC on purpose to avoid someone giving me crap like OMG. You can't use AC while racing because it loses the horsepowers. That's why I turned AC off and I'm taking it as a man. A man that is staring into eyes of death. I am ready. Let's go. I have never been this ready. We are starting off with second gear. Holy moly. Totally destroyed by an M3. My blood pressure skyrocketed. It destroyed me on such a level that I won't even tell you to try it one more time. I swear my blood pressure is way too high right now. For sure Mustang lost this one, but we can't take away this from it. Surpassing is when you are ahead by a bumper, door, trunk, but when you surpass 800 horsepower Mustang Shelby GT500 without any remorse, when you skin it alive and rip it into pieces and leave it to die in a corner, that is not surpassing. This is a total domination. All of this is happening in the span of 400 meters. It's not like going out of town or driving on an autobahn. We are talking about 400 meter drive here. I guess you pay attention as I do to other YouTubers and reviewers from states, from England, Russia, all those places, and I have not heard anyone saying this. In reality, this car gave me a highly satisfying experience on a track. Sure, it is tuned and you might say all the tuned cars are much better, but when the tuning costs 2K and 2.5K, it is really fascinating what this car can do. Sure, some of y'all will say that alcohol messes up the car, but today was a special case. It's not like we pour alcohol in tanks every day daily. It's a special case. This car is tuned by GT Performance as well as M6. Those who watched our shows know that, and both cars perform extremely great. Sure, we got a bit upset that M6 got owned. Plus, let alone M6, GT500 is not your usual Taiwan body kit Mustang. It's a truly beast of a car. The Mustang of Mustangs. That's our homies ride. Swarovski bling. Straight up hood ride. But it is indeed a very cool car. I need to drift on this baby after this one, since we are in a motor park. Let's get to the stock specs. Competition has 510 horsepowers and 650 newton meters of torque. Ordinary M3, not a competition model, has 480 horsepowers. 510 horsepowers don't sound as cool as, for example, 800 or 900. They're really shocking numbers, but we were shocked that this car manages to use 510 horses so efficiently. And it really makes the numbers dim for us. We are done with numbers. Now let's get to the gearbox. The gearbox installed is almost, almost is an important word here. Almost like on Supra. Here. I mean, in the competition model, we have M Steptronic installed. What is the difference? M Steptronic is much more tuned to say roughly. It is more aggressive and it also has some changes in cooling system. It has aluminum crankcase installed with a respective filter and the difference between this and 8 HP gearbox is that 8 HP has a plastic crankcase and filter is integrated into it. 
In any case, aluminum helps. It is cooling much faster. It's initially designed to take much bigger load. It has tiny differences inside, and the switching part, where it switches in a fraction of millisecond, is a straight-up madness. Owner told me that they tuned it a bit more, and now it switches even faster. To sum this all up, it adds up from all sides, and this is exactly what we should appreciate about this car. Let me highlight this. It totally shocked us. We love it. Car is running on AMS oil. The oil performed great today, especially in this heat. We are in the shade now, but you can see how sunny it is over there. As soon as it gets a bit less sunny, we will start to drift. Many of you have seen other test drives, and some of you might have heard. The water is overheating, the oil is not right, and so on. But for those cases, we have prepared a special drift test. So let's see how it is going to pass our rough test drive. I won't be talking much. Now let's get to drifting. I think we did everything, tested it in every possible way to find out what is this vehicle capable of. We already have some thoughts on it, which I am going to share with you all. We did everything, drag, drift, city test drive, we tested it in every way. Now let me get to the last main question. What are my thoughts on this car? There is nothing more left to say because I talked a lot about it while our test drive. One thing that I can tell you is, this front, by front I mean radiator grill, is much better life than it is in pictures. I love this car's performance more than its design today, and I will tell you why. This is not one of those timeless designs, at least this is my point of view. I don't think that after years pass, this is still going to be a killer looking car. Because it is not aggressive enough. It is also not elegant enough. Sure, it is fine. I can't say that it's a bad looking car, but it definitely is not terrifying. It doesn't make your stomach crumble from the distance, which I love about BMWs. But overall, it is fine. Now let me get back to the question, if it fits my taste or not. I mean, these types of cars overall, I think that this is not the type of car that satisfies my taste, 100%. Talking of sport cars, I'm looking forward to see more special supercar appearance. But for those of you who like to drive in the city as well as to ride on track, 
who genuinely enjoy the combination M3 might be the best choice for you. I wouldn't consider buying it myself. Let me tell you right away. But those of you who decide to buy it, trust me, you will absolutely love it. You won't regret buying this car, for whatever price it costs. Let's leave alone the specs, like horsepowers and how much energy it produces. This car is so insanely fast and has such smooth handling that I'm not sure how our other rivals going to surpass it. Because I'm sure that direct rivals of this brand, I'm talking about Mercedes and Audi and etc. The brands that are trying to make cars in same lane, I'm sure that no way they can mess with this car. I am absolutely sure. This 3.0 right here is making all the other engines look helpless. It makes me wonder, how? But it's a fact. The performance of this car today is highly appreciated by me and I think we should rate it with a giant star. Alongside the car, we are also a bit tired now, because we've been filming for several days and all of us need rest. I hope that you will like the video, because we honestly put our soul in making it. We knew how many of y'all expected this video, by commenting and messaging us, and I'm sure and absolutely believe that you are going to love this video. That's the time to say goodbye to you, but before that, I know so many of you are watching this channel but haven't even subscribed to. Please do so in order not to miss new content that we put out there for you. Content which includes cool cars and even cooler test drives. So stay with us. Goodbye everybody, till next time.